Hi. There's been a lot of great questions about using equipment-based sustainability or equipment-based avenues for movement. Now, listen, guys, you're not going to go out and play baseball without a glove and a bat. You know what I mean? You need equipment. That's part of the game. But when we're talking about development, do you really need equipment? First of all, the answer is no. You know, if you're using a crawl track to get your baby to crawl, we've got a problem. Morning, Patty. How are you? How's everything going? How are the kiddos? How's Miss Nancy? Anyway, sorry, guys. Like I said, I have a lot of friends here, and uh, and when, when I can see them, and I mean see them literally because of my eyes, because uh, sometimes, too, like, Keely just came in. But sometimes I just, it's like, what? You know, depending on where I'm at. So, getting old, reading glasses. Um, anyway, when you're using equipment to help your child, we already have a problem. Okay, so first of all, what I don't like about equipment for functional movement to get your child to develop, to get your child to develop smarter or more efficiently. What I don't like about equipment is first of all, they didn't do a proper evaluation. Just because Johnny can do an infinity walk doesn't mean Susie can. And I can tell you right now, a child that hasn't come up to sitting um, through their back is going to have a lot of trouble with that because they haven't come to sitting through their back. They haven't crossed a rotational midline. So now you want them to do a rotational midline in their infinity walk. I understand what the, what the concept of brain dream is trying to do. But again, when a the, the, like skipping you want to make a happy child have them skip skipping just because it creates happiness except for the child that can't skip and so like right now I'm working with two professional volleyball players right and she's just like you're blowing me away of how fa like you knew where I was my positions and all this but not only that but I solved the problem like in five minutes of working with her you know, the way, the way they are with the vision, where they are with, with the positioning on the, you know, again, I said, you know, like I said, excuse me, I don't know volleyball. I said, but you play here, you can move here. On this side, you'll actually have to turn. And she's like, it's exactly how I play. And for 10 years, and they just keep telling me patterning. All the patterning in the world is not going to change your, your sports prowess, and it's not going to change your development. It's not the way the human body works. We've been doing it for years, so we don't change it. Even Tony Robbins like, eh, if you want to be like Janet Jackson, you know what I mean? Just imitate her for... No, you know, Janet Jackson was a... First of all, she had family harmonics, right? Andy Williams taught you that. And again, I'm showing my age. You know, that's where the Osmonds are from. The palette of, of getting a family base of singers together versus getting five persons in a group. So she had that. She was the only girl in those dynamics or woman, but a girl at the time, you know, and she was around the Jacksons and she's around Michael. She saw evolution. She saw, she has so much education. Now you're going to sit there and say, I'm just going to act like her and be like her in five minutes. No, this is, this is accumulation of development. Would I want to have her life again? I don't know her. You know what I mean? Do I want that? So you, you can't go by imitation. So if you're trying to sh shove your child down a slide saying crawl, yes, I get it. Everybody sees locomotion. Ah! Well, first of all, crawl track, no peripheral vision because you don't want the baby to fall off the slide. So that's cut off. And two, they are actually preventing the coming down. So, because they're falling down the slide, you know what I mean? And they're preventing it. And this is supposed to be supposed to stimulate them. So again, if you already have a child with low vision responses, that's not where you want to go. You have a child with fine motor responses, that's not where you want to go. There'll always be someone that excels at everything. You know, like, I mean, you, you see these kiddos where you put a bunch of uh, pallets in the backyard and they're like goats. Da, 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 da. And then there's a kid going, uh, next step, where is it? Um, and so you just think, okay, just keep practicing, just keep practicing, you'll get it. Some things need practice. They do. If I'm going to sit there and do a layup every day, you know what I need? I need it, my stepping, my spatial orientation. It takes practice, not necessarily patterning, because when you can do the same task five different ways, guess what? You're more efficient. The only reason why I'm so efficient at movement lesson, because I can do it any which way to Sunday. You know what I mean? I'm not looking, okay, do I put my hands here, but put my hands here. But when, so when you're new, that's the way you start out with anything. Uh, if I just put my, right, Michelle had her hands here, Michelle's here, it's going to work. Well, that child had different vision. That child had a different response. That child maybe had scoliosis. Yes, the hand positioning is the same, but at the same time too, 
you're going to have to make it your own. And the only way you can do that is with time. That's why I can work with a volleyball player just as much as I can work with a child with, with Joe Burris syndrome. So, so, and again, it's not a brag. I, I put in the time, you know what I mean? I'm the Tiger Woods of movement lesson. I've done it in the storm. I've done it in a plane. I've done it at a dinner table. I've done it, you know what I mean? I can, I don't need to prop. I don't need to go anything. But again, I've just done, and I know my limitations. If I'm doing head work, I'm still going after that right hand. I'll move my body around it. Now, is my left hand good? Oh, it's like butter. But I, to me, my right hand is still going to be, you know what I mean? So I'll work more like this versus like this. Now, you might not, now not, not see the difference. I know the difference, right? And so I'm going to give you my best work. So, so again, when you're working with an infinity walk and all those kind of things, I'm telling you right now, guys, if you want a smart child, you do this work. I know I go after the special needs. I know I'm going after the development. I know I'm going after all those things, but I'm telling you right now, even my, my son's got full blown autism, right? He's got a 3.74 at ASU. You know what I mean? And he's in the National Honor Society. I don't say that as a brag. My other son got 180 credits, two and a half degrees, you know, summa cum laude, you know what I mean? The whole nine yards, he has his cords, but he's also had this work since he's four. So when people are like, what did you do to have two? And you know, and yes, it's genetics. I'm not half bad and they get it. And their dad was really smart with the math. So, so again, genetics comes into play, but also because of what the conversations are around the dinner table. Um, you know, I changed a lot of my life going to India to see, see in going there and dinner table and seeing them talk about business to a three-year-old. I'm like, you can talk about money to kids, you know, and I, I came back and started with Graham, you know, we went through all the Robert Kiyosaki's. So, so again, but, but when you're looking at, I need to get my child better and you're doing it through equipment. You got to watch it. You really got to watch it. Equipment, like I said, is necessary. I need a volleyball to play volleyball. I need a net. I need to square it off. There's rules to the game, but that's a game. When you're looking for development and you want your child to, to, to do it right or do it the way you expect them to do it, and two, when you have limitations, you're going to put those, just like a movement lesson, you're going to put those limitations into the child. So those are the things that you're going to be watching out for. But I'm just saying, I, I'm, you've got to watch what kind of equipment you're offering the child. And if the equipment is, again, to get them to move, you can't take away a movement to get a movement. It's just mathematically, it's, 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 it's just, it doesn't work in math and it doesn't work in the human body. I can't restrict movement to gain movement. So I need to offer it. Now that's just, I'm not saying to never give a child, let's say an AFO or never put a child on an infinity walk. But if you want optimal development within that, you know, again, so if you have optimal development, you're not using a crawl track because the development happened. You've, you've already, you've started off here. If you were worried, you got in the worry bear, worried parent camp and you were already doing that you were working on on the tummy time you were working on that stuff before it was even a thing where you had to push a baby down the slide but has it been done for years yes but just because something's been done for years look at the space program gosh like i just give me a minute with elon musk and i'm just gonna blow his brains out because again we are still looking to send astronauts out to outer space to die we colonize Mars, we're going to have the astronauts passing away quicker than, and than we, I mean, if we colonize the moon, quicker than Mars, because the moon has no rotation. We can't spin a space station. First of all, the, the cost that it would take, and two, that's not the way gravity works. Centrifugal force is not artificial gravity. It just isn't. It's a force in nature, and it's a force we have to deal with. And yes, it's a pulling force, but gravity is not a pulling force to living creatures. It is if you're special needs. So all of these things can come into play. I can talk it to this level or I can talk it to this level. But if you're looking for equipment to make your child smarter and they can't respond properly with rotational movements, with weight transfer and transitional skills, you are not gonna get the development you need. And that's including cognitive. So if you want the smart baby, you do movement lesson. If you wanna help your baby with optimal development, you do movement lesson. And also if you're afraid that your child's not in a, in, in a level due to genetics, due to birth trauma, whatever, for optimal development, you still do it this way because this is what you're gonna to do to add to those movements. Because the more movements your child has, and this is why I do a lot of stuff right now, just like these sleep sacks. And they're not even sleep, I mean, this one I just posted that it's rat, I mean, you're shutting down the nervous system. Do you know how, and I'm gonna find a video to, to show this. A baby should have a gazillion moves as they sleep. 
right? You're probably would depend on different types of swaddling, but more so these, these Velcro suckers, you are taking away during their sleep for over 40% of their movements. So how is that going to help with their development? And you go, but they're sleeping through the night, but are they developing? I'll take development guys. Are you, we got to go after development, but we have to know why your child can't do the infinity walk right off the bat that they don't need it. That's what we're after. Why are you going to a point where you think a crawl track's the answer? That's what we have to go after. We have to go after the stresses that you need to help your child, whether you do move in lesson or not. I, that, that part, you know, you've never heard it my way or the highway, but I'm getting close because, because again, the answer always seems to be, but if I buy this gadget, if I buy this gadget, my kid will sleep. Well, why don't we figure out why your child's not sleeping? If I buy this gadget, my child's gonna suddenly crawl. Why don't, you know what I mean? And it's the same thing adults do it. You know, I get it. I need, you know, I might need medication. Well, I'm not on any medication, but I mean, I, as a person, I might need medication. Why, what, what's the stress? Oh, it's my heart. Okay, do we want to modify? And again, everybody goes after diet. I get it. That, to me, that's like another pill. Nobody looks at movement. You know, um, I, I worked on my mace bars this morning. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I need to move. I need to do, do things. And so, but we've got to pass that mentality down to our children. It needs to be proactive. It needs to be that a child decides, hey, I don't want to play volleyball. I want to play soccer. That's fine. But at least you can choose, right? Versus I can't either do either one of them. There was a memory popped up. Someone said about when they played dodgeballs as a kid. Oh my God, I did have that ball in my face. I was not good at that stuff. But again, nobody was helping me. It was like, I, I always got taught I was not trying hard enough as far as that goes. I was dyslexic, I had my own issues. But I also was in braces since I was six weeks old because of my feet, I had denison bars. But again, nobody looked at that. So, you know, just even personally, um, where I am now to where I was before, I mean, I wouldn't go back to that body for all the tea in China um, uh, nor that mind. You know, people go, how do you do what you do now? I think it's because I do movement lesson and and I'm not aging the way you should be aging. And thank God. And, um, you know, but also because of a Goya, you know, I get off my, okay, you, that's a bad word. But um, again, I get off the couch, nothing happens. But again, we have to look at this all the way across the board. So I love that people put the input and they want to know why and that's what I was always like. I take any kind of training. I'm the why person. Well, why are we doing this? Well, because we've been doing this for 30 years. Okay, that didn't answer my question. Why are we doing this? And and those kind of things. But but please, keep the questions coming. I think they're great. But I hope, hope, hope you really um, are realizing that it's necessary for you to, if you're using these kind of things to improve something, there's already something wrong. And this is what we have to redirect. It's, it's where's the stress coming from versus, again, something being wrong. And go from there. Thanks.